This video is sponsored by Otis. My childhood. It was pretty much exclusively superheroes. I don't think you'd ever meet a bigger geek than me, to be honest. I exclusively watched the Marvel and DC shows, I exclusively watched the movies, bought all the toys, and played all the games. So everyone was watching, you know, Disney Channel original movies, and I was just re-watching Spider-Man 2 like the pleb I am. And I grew up with films like X-Men, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Batman Begins, and all these films shaped my youth. Exactly, exactly like this. But then in 2008, a film emerged, one that completely condensed everything amazing yet ridiculous about superhero films from the 2000s, but amped it up to the 12th degree. And that film is epic movie- Wait, that film is disaster mo- no, sh wait, uh, nope, I found it. That film is- STOP THE BUS! Oh my gosh, guys, I picked the perfect time to talk about this movie. This film isn't perfect by any means, it, it really isn't. Like, a fifth of the jokes have not aged well. You can tell they were really trying to be edgy with their jokes, but when the movie lands, it lands fairly well. And the film is able to capture what makes classic superhero films so cool, yet so weird. It makes us appreciate superhero films and makes us understand why we enjoy them. But you know what else you would enjoy? The Otis app. Otis is a stock market for cultural assets where almost anyone can buy and sell shares of rare collectibles. And these collectibles can be anything, from comic books to video games to contemporary art. See, collectibles and art and stuff can usually be shown and be appreciated by everyone and all that, but only the very wealthy can afford and collect it. But for those in the US, you can download Otis for free and follow weekly drops. Buy shares from the latest drops from Otis, you can own portion of a cultural asset. While making this video, I saw some dope stuff like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 1, graded by the CGC at a high 9.8, this specific copy is one of the highest graded copies in existence. There's also the original Apple iPhone from 2007, literally unopened, and Fantastic Four number 52, the issue responsible for introducing the world to the Black Panther. So sign up for Otis with the link in the description and get your first share free when you fund your account. Thanks so much Otis for sponsoring this video and let's get on to superhero movie. I can fly. Okay. I can fly. This just in, Tom Cruise is dead. Do you know the show Chernobyl? Yeah, look at how many awards that show got. One person is particularly important here, and that's Craig Mazin. The dude created, wrote, and produced the show, a show he began researching for in 2014. So I started researching Chernobyl just because I was generally interested in it, and HBO said, okay. Let's see if you can do it. And he has gotten a shit ton of awards for the show. A Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Writing, Best Original Long Form from the Writers Guild of America, Outstanding Producer of Limited Series Television by the Producers Guild, and let's not forget that he wrote and directed Superhero Movie. <laughs> yep, you heard that right. And that's pretty damn crazy. Huge comedy background, Chernobyl. The funny thing is, I think, I think a lot of comedy writers can absolutely write drama. Comedy requires an understanding of the human psyche that I think is actually more accurate. Comedy requires you to not only understand the logic, the emotional logic, you also need to understand the emotional logic of your audience. It's cool that he was able to improve upon his craft. So now that we understand what Mazin is capable of, let's talk about what he was trying to achieve with Superhero Movie. In the 2000s, there was a series of films that were constantly being pumped out. Some of these films have completely random names, but you understood it was within the same series of films because of what they looked like. And what they looked like was, uh, well, cheap. And I'll just call these the movie movies. And these films were spoof films, films that made fun of other movies that were coming out during this time. The movie movie series of the 2000s contains the Scary Movie series, Epic Movie, Meet the Spartans, Disaster Movie, and Vampire Suck. And if you didn't know, these films went past the 2000s, with The Starving Games, Best Night Ever, and Superfast, which is a Fast and Furious spoof film. But I know what you're thinking, where's Superhero Movie? I put Superhero Movie in a category of its own. As a scary movie, date movie, epic movie, meet the Spartans, disaster movie, vampire suck, and so on were written by the duo Jason Friedberg or Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer. The only movie from the movie movies that was not written by these two is Superhero Movie. And surprisingly, maybe other than Scary Movie, though I haven't seen that movie in a while, it's probably the best film in this quote-unquote franchise. I've waited long enough for this egomaniac. We're the board of directors. Our time is valuable. Not as valuable 
is mine, Mr. Carlson. I think the reason why is because maybe instead of trying to make fun of the superhero genre, it appreciates what it is. It doesn't really insult superhero movies, it is a superhero movie. Just one that wants to showcase how insane all these movies are, while still making it clear that it's cool to enjoy these kinds of films. You do not have the assets to justify this love. I'm sorry. But what about this? That was the last one. This new promotion is proving quite popular. And the main reason I recognize this film is because we constantly get deconstructions of the superhero genre. Violent, gritty productions that decide to comment on superheroes by grounding the story in the real world. And don't take this as a bad thing, it's not. Most of these are amazing. It's just nice to see a film that comments on the superhero genre in a different way. What are you even doing here? I'm looking seriously out over the city. Well, that's what I do here. So if you're not moving, I guess we're gonna have to share. Uh, okay, fine. Superhero movie spoofs Raimi's Spider-Man more than any other movie. It wants to make this a Spider-Man-like origin story, but dumbs it down and makes it as ridiculous as possible, going as far as to make Rick Riker's origin a blend of Spider-Man's and Batman's. But even though the film's story is incredibly nonsensical and comedic, the core elements of the film are genuinely good. There's actually a story, the villain has genuine motivation if you took all the bad jokes away and had the movie take itself a little more serious, you'd genuinely get a good movie. Well, you'd get an alternate version of Raimi's Spider-Man, but you get what I mean. Our comedy is about playing the stupidity of our jokes against the very real nature of the movie itself. So our music is, has to be great and serious and our effects have to look great and the world around us needs to look like a real movie. The only thing that should be off are, are the things our characters are saying. And I remember watching this movie when I was younger and watching it over and over again. Because I love superhero movies, tropes and all. And watching a movie that knows how crazy these tropes are and appreciating them is really cool. When you're writing characters, you have to think like they think. And the only way you can think like they think is if you understand who they are fully. And the only way you can understand who they are fully is to really, really create another person. Try and be true to the person that you've created. And they theoretically will turn out interesting if you're true and real to them. But you have to do the work. You know, you have to do the work. How did you do that? It's easier than it looks. <gasps> no, I don't think so. One of the biggest highlights is Leslie Nielsen who plays Rick's Uncle Albert. His most notable film role to me is The Naked Gun, and a big reason for his appearance in the film is that David Zucker is attached to this film. And I think that's one of the reasons this film is so much better than other films in the movie franchise. Because the people working on it are, no offense, more experienced than those working on the other films. It seems like the people who made superhero movie don't want to just make a spoof movie, they want to make a movie. Other movie movies use references as jokes, like Disaster Movie which came out the same year had Iron Man appear, and that was the joke. But Superhero Movie uses references to make the jokes. The joke in Superhero Movie isn't that Johnny Storm appears, the joke is that Johnny Storm sets himself on fire. Get a blanket or something! Holy shit! <laughs> and the film is a blast to watch if you're a superhero fan because it takes from so many interpretations of superheroes. Even Batman and Robin, believe it or not. I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. No! I am the hourglass, and your time is up. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! I wish I could stay longer, Dragonfly. <laughs> but I just don't have the time. And I do think superhero movie was ahead of its time, at least conceptually. Like I stated before, there's a lot that hasn't aged well, particularly with its garbage lead actor, but I think there's a lot of positives that we can take away from the film. A type of superhero spoof film would be perfect if it was made now. Like superhero movies are being pumped out year after year with so much story and lore behind them, the possibilities are endless. And it'd also be a good way to remember what these movies ultimately are. Wacky stories where heroes with power wear spandex and have to fight maniacal bad guys with crazy powers and an even crazier plan. And with superhero movie recognizing what superhero movies ultimately are and what they bring, it makes us appreciate the little things about this genre of films that brings us joy. And that's why I'm here to say, this is an open letter to Craig Mazin. Superhero movie needs to come back. Reboot it. New cast, new story, make fun of the MCU, make fun of the DCEU, make fun of the superhero shows that analyze superhero shows. We need this. Hashtag, we need superhero movie too. Hashtag, 
Don't, Don't forget, forget the, the bitches. bitches. Thank you. Hey, you made it. Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure to get some Brown Table merch on the Crowdmade store, link in the description. Thanks so much, Isa, for the fan art. Hope looks super dope. We really do need an Interstellar Ranger Commence and Don Machi crossover. If you don't know what Interstellar Ranger Commence is, it's the animated series I'm working on. Make sure to check it out, link in the description. Now, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you, patrons, for supporting me. You guys are awesome. Your support really helps me out. It helps me get better equipment. I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. And last but not least, if you want to become part of the Chad Nation and you're not a Chad yet, are you kidding me? All you have to do is subscribe and turn on bell notifications and you're set, baby. Once you do that, you will literally have the powers of the Dragonfly. That's right, you will literally be able to break dance on a wall. So do it, become Dragonfly. And then, <laughs> and then once you all have powers, and then when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, be become, part become part of the Chad Nation, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video, and I hope you come back to the table.